Well, this is super, super cool, Mark Smith, because I feel incredibly honoured to have the opportunity to ask you a couple of questions. Because um, I, I don't know how long you were talking for before I came up on screen, but for those who don't know, and I certainly didn't until recently, your idea pods artist in residence and we can see your beautiful artwork behind you and actually if you move your screen a little bit actually there it is um and if you move back to you and actually sort of position me because i'm in your face right now and i want to see your oh. beautiful face okay got yes it. there perfect you're there excellent i um i wanted to just facilitate getting your story out to the idea pod audience because you've started so many of the hashtags on our wonderful site one of which is who's who what is idea pod feedback sense of wordplay mythos um the first question i want to ask you i'm so curious about is um why did you start using idea pod in the first place H how did you get involved in this and um you know, what has inspired you to pursue the different um, opportunities that IdeaPod can uh, give birth to in the very unique way that you have? Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it's kind of, I'll, I'll, it's a long story because it's a, it's a story that goes back over 35 years when in 1979 I had an epiphany while working on a project about the electromagnetic spectrum. And I was um, reflecting upon some ideas of Buckminster Fuller and uh, about how we can only tune in with our senses to a very, you know, like 0.01% of the, of the spectrum and through our natural senses. And with our tools that we have been evolving, we're able to tune in much more and get a sense of the world around us. And um, in doing that, I was before computers and I had the it was before the internet and I was in the library and I was in our offices for about a week straight, working very hard, working long nights, not sleeping a lot. And I was in that zone and I had an epiphany and it was quite overwhelming, but it was very exciting. And when I came up with the term leprechaun, which comes from electrons, protons and consciousness, electing between the pro and the con. And I also came up with what I call the metaphysical equation, you know, Einstein, had a physical equation for understanding our world around us with E equals MC squared. And I came up with this idea that um, evolution equals mind times omnidirectional communication. So it was taking Einstein's equation to the next step, meaning we had E equals MC to the infinite power. And um, fast forward to the week that they launched IdeaPod in beta. It was an invitation only thing. And I didn't know about it, but the, the, the year before, at the end of the year, I had been following Jason Silva with his new shots of awe. And I was like, oh my gosh, this guy is a first generation full of leprechaun. He's somebody who's leveraging our new technologies and discussing, discussing where co human consciousness is going. And so I started following him and decided that it was time to take out my a leprechaun epiphany and share it with the world because I would just been watching it uh, evolve and realizing that um, I wanted to get it out. And I also wanted to do something for my daughters to share my ideas, my life story and, and document it. Um, I'd kept a paper journal back 35 years ago with some of these ideas. I kept a journal journal for my daughters when they were younger and I wanted to get back to doing that. So I followed Jason Silva and he did a video uh, about ideas and it was basically one of the first videos to introduce when IdeaPod launched in beta. And so I showed up on IdeaPod's doorstep the first day it launched in beta. And I think I was the first person to um, knock on their door that they didn't know and said, hey, I, I wanna come in. I think I know what you're doing here and I wanna participate. I wanna play around in IdeaPod. And um, that was about three and a half years ago. And uh, I've been here present and playing an idea pod, trying to figure out how it could be used. I've created, like you said, a lot of hashtags. Um, I've evolved my ideas. I've, a docu I've documented, documented my ideas and where I've come from to arrive here now. And uh, that's kind of my who's who in a nutshell. It's so amazing. And just before, and I know that, the leprechaun that's your username on idea pod and we talked a bit about how 
you know, human consciousness is evolving. And so where are we going to be evolving to? There are some words that are very uniquely yours, Mark, like the new sphere. Well, that's not my, metaphysical. My I use it a lot, but it definitely is not my word. That came about in about 19, I think, 20s. Tihard de Chardin uh, coined the term with some others. Um, and it's, you know, nous is Greek for mind, seer. So like the biosphere or atmosphere, we have the newosphere. We have that realm of human consciousness. Where do we keep all inf information? And the, aside from the fact that we can communicate with our past and with our future by how we, um, that's hence the omnidirectional communication with when we put information out there, whether it's on our books, whether it's in our stories, whether it's in our data and digital information. And now all this is floating around us in the newosphere. And mind you, that is not a new term idea that uh, Deschardin came up with. It was uh, the term conscious, co um, cosmic consciousness was coined in the late 1800s by Burke. And I actually have his book that my mother had on her bookshelf. This is from first published in 1901. She's got a little bit later version. And, um, and I found that on her bookshelf. And I've been following these ideas and trying to connect the dots and uh, that's kind of, I think, how I ended up with the leprechauns and um, living out here in the newosphere. So for those who are new to the newosphere and the cosmic consciousness and certainly leprechauns, how would you describe it and how would you describe the interplay between the newosphere and how you use IdeaPod? Well, I think, I think IdeaPod is a subset of the newosphere. I think it's a part of the newosphere. And for me, it's a playground to try out um, how to relate ideas, how to connect ideas, which is what we do in life. That's, you know, we, we build upon each other's ideas and out of that grow new ideas. Um, and, and I think IdeaPod is a, is a great uh, example of that. And as we develop or as um, the team develops the, the platform and we have pods and people realize uh, how, um, what a cool tool it is to be able to relate, whether it's my, my own ideas, you'll see I was the one who came in and just like, suddenly there were hundreds of relationships going on with ideas because that's how I saw using it in the, one of the, the uh, great um, uh, kind of ideas that they brought was that, what, that other social media platforms don't do. And I think that's, um, that's great, aside from the fact that we can communicate and respond to each other's ideas, but that we can relate the ideas and soon we'll be able to bring those ideas together in pods, in idea pods whether they're pods of people or pods of ideas. We've, um, I noticed that your mother, Rose Marie Smith, is here. Yes. And so you are the people. And um, one of the questions I really wanted to ask you was, what's the most remarkable thing that's happened to you since you came across IdeaPod? The most remarkable thing in relationship to IdeaPod? Um, well, it's reignited um, my sense of awe. Uh, it's, it's reignited my desire to, to, to be myself, to, to delve back into my ideas and see where else I can take them. It's, um, it's, it's given me that place to share my ideas with my daughters. And, um, you know, one of the things, aside from IdeaPod and the fact that it'll be there digitally, um, one of the things I did in the first six months of IdeaPod was create a book. It's the, probably, I think, the only book that exists uh, about IdeaPod. It's called My Idea Pod, and um, it's the first six months. It's every idea that I had, and I did that as a gift to IdeaPod and to my daughters. Um, I, Justin and Mark were going to meet with um, Richard Branson on Necker Island for the first time, and I wanted to give them something physical because it's so ephemeral, you know, as, as a, a social media platform that they could show what a user was doing with it and how it could manifest itself. And as my understanding is that first artist proof book, um, the hardback version is sitting in Richard Branson's library in Necker Island. So, um, you know, whether they're digital or physical, it's nice to see your ideas get spread. Oh, well, absolutely. And it's such a beautiful picture. You said that, you know, you're an artist and you talked to me a little bit about some of the work that you did before so Apple and um, Microsoft with big names. And a lot of the art that you put on IdeaPod is your own original art. 
Can you talk a bit about the piece of art you've got in the background? Yeah, actually, um, it's kind of hard. I, have, I think I'd have to move to really, it's, it's about eight feet tall. And I did this in the 90s when I came back from living in Europe. Um, I do a lot of art that has to do with, you can see the earth. Um, if you can tell, there's, there's, there's a human actually holding that earth and off balance. And, and a lot of my artwork is exactly that. It has to do with humanity's balance in, in our existence um, on this planet. And um, I, I feel like we, 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 I ride a unicycle. I have since I've been a kid. And, and, and when you ride a unicycle, you are perpetually off balance, <laughs> but yet you can stay upright. And I think that's what humanity has been doing all these years is, um, you know, they, they keep leaning forward, losing their balance, catching their balance. It's like walking. I think Lori Anderson did a great song about that, but um, walking and falling. Yeah. So I, I, I think uh, we, we, we live in this, in this, I think it's the liminal zone between being on balance, in balance and off balance. It's in that space where it's like, whoa. <laughs> Can you talk a bit about the liminal zone? You and I were, were um, exploring this idea of the last fairy tale and then moving into something. Can you explore that with our audience who seem to be watching from many places? There's Maria from Bulai. We have Justin in Vietnam. We've got Boone in California um, and a number of other people who have joined. Um, Idea Pod really is a collective of people all around the world sharing their uh, experiences with humanity and with their ideas. What's this last fairy tale that, um, that we're moving from? Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think that's what was trying to be expressed in cosmic consciousness. And again, in uh, the ideas of the newosphere. And I think Jason Silva now is kind of the mouthpiece of that um, next step of where we are in, in between um, this last fairy tale and our next new mythos, our, our mythic operating system, the stories that we tell ourselves to move forward, to be able to re relate to the world around us. And um, I think the liminal zone is being between that last fairy tale that we used to believe in and this new mythos that we're trying to um, define. And, um, and that that place, the liminal zone is in between where we're off balance a little bit, trying to hold on to the past before we can grab the future and rely on that. You, um, you talk about the leprechaun and before I was saying that it sounds a lot like leprechaun, the Irish leprechaun, which is a small mischievous thing. Um, how has your mischief informed the way that you share ideas on IdeaPod? Um, how does my mischief? Uh, that's a funny question. Um, well, let me let me let me tell you my little leprechaun ditty. Um, share that with with the audience. Hi, everybody, by the way. Um, so let me start with that. E leprechaun, e leprechaun, tell me an age old secret. E leprechaun, e leprechaun, where do you hide and keep it? You started with a word. This I have heard, and now I intend to seek it. So. You know, human consciousness relies on language. That's what makes us unique in the way we um, share our consciousness and uh, externalize it and uh, move forward with ideas. Um, and I think what we do is, the, going back to the Irish leprechaun, is, is with that fairy tale or that story, it was if you could catch one, it would tell you a secret. And so I took that idea and took it to the next place because when I had my epiphany and the words um, electrons and protons and consciousness that were on my drawing board for this project I was working on suddenly morphed together into a leprechaun, um, all these ideas came forward, electing between the pro and the con. That's what we do to move forward with our ideas. We take the best ideas, we evaluate them, and we, we rely on them until the next idea comes along. And, um, and I think that's what human are and that's what we do and I think our myths and our stories um, reflect who we are in different characters that we you know externalize them through our mythos or through our fairy tales well electing between the pro and the con you can also elect between the con and the con and I say that because there's two different stories that are happening one that is maybe in the more abstract sphere so in the um, world of consciousness 
one that's in the more practical sphere where I came from, the world of the concrete. Um, how do you describe what's happening in our, I guess, new emerging cultural narrative for those who are, um, are much more comfortable and content in the concrete uh, and who might get some value to um, understand more of the consciousness or the abstract? Well, I think, first of all, on the concrete, this actually is where the leprechauns came out of this project that I was working on, where we were reflect reflecting uh, in the late 70s, where we, we were reflecting upon the ideas of Buckminster Fuller. And what Bucky was saying is, how can we be so definitive about what we know when we can only tune in to a very small percentage of the universe around us? And so we've developed all these tools to create a sense of what's going on around us by extending our senses. And um, we're inclined to hold on to what we know. We think things are solid. There are no solids in the universe. They are wave, there are waves and frequencies, and it's a matter of how high a frequency and how far in between the waves that makes something seem solid to us. And so I think what we have to realize, and I think a lot of people do, but some people are adamant that they really understand things is that we just don't know a lot of things and we hold on to the things around us um, and, and I find it hard to let go because it, it means change. It means the unknown. It means having to accept that we may be wrong. Um, and, and I, I think that's important to, um, and that's part of the new narrative is that we are learning to tune in. Um, we are expanding our senses and we are letting go of our of some of the legacy so that we can move forward. It's just harder for others to do that than some. You're an artist, and there's a question up here that Boone asked that I want to um, go back to. But over time, um, you notice that artists, philosophers, uh, playwrights, um, thespians are often derided, uh, marginalized. Um, treated with kind of scorn, perhaps because they are, you know, those that make associations between seemingly unrelated domains and create those shifts um, in patterns of thinking um, that disrupt and accelerate our evolution. Boone said, Mark, you mentioned you knew you were an, a leprechaun before the internet. Do you sometimes ever feel alone before IdeaPod? Ask that question because it's a question around belonging. Um, and we interviewed Marianne Cantwell earlier, the lady who's been speaking very prolifically about the liminal space who inspired me to write a piece about how I didn't feel like I belonged or fit in because um, I re resonated with being more liminal than more siloed or concrete. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts about belonging and how IdeaPod has played a role in maybe helping you express um, parts of yourself that may not be as well received in other areas of um, social media. Well, let, let me go back to when I first had this epiphany um, in, in the late 70s was I was very young. I was in my 20s and um, it was overwhelming. And when I shared this epiphany and these concepts um, with some of the people that I worked with who had worked with Buckminster Fuller and people that were very, very bright people, and had these kinds of um, ideas that pushed boundaries before their time. Um, you know, I, it was presented to me, Mark, be very careful who you say what to, because people are not going to be very accepting. They're going to think you're off the deep end. And, um, and I tried, what I thought at first was I, I had a story that I wanted to tell. And, and I was having problems getting that story out. And what I realized was, it wasn't that I had a story that I was trying to tell. It was that I had a peek into the future of what was coming and I just needed to be patient and kind of roll with it and, and see what happened to see if it aligned with what I, my vision was, this epiphany was. And so um, I put it away and yet I put it away as far as my physical journal and talking a lot about it. Although there were some key people in my life that I met soon thereafter that helped me evolve the ideas and we played with them. Um, there's, these ideas are shared in IdeaPod, as a matter of fact. And um, I did feel uh, alone in that, but yet I used these ideas as uh, my awareness of what was going on around me. So it gave me uh, insights to, to the world around me. But 
you can imagine 35 years or so later when I tuned into um, Jason Silva and then Ideapod, I, I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, the first thing I said to, to Justin when I met him was, I know, I, I know exactly what you're doing here and I'm here to, to play in it because I've been waiting 35 years for a platform like this so that I can share my ideas the way that um, I, I felt they should be shared. I feel that, like in this, yeah. it's, it's, I totally um, hear you. And I feel like in this conversation, it's a beautiful reflection of your um, uh, omnidirectional communication because we've gone into your past 35 years earlier when you had your epiphany and now we're at this place where you um, have joined IdeaPod, become our greater artist in residence, prolific user, inspirer, poet, starter of hashtags. And now we're moving into this conversation about where is the human consciousness evolving to? And I'd love to ask you a question before we leave because I noticed that we're running out of time. What is your vision for IdeaPod and where do you see it evolving to? Um. Well, I think, I think IdeaPod is on the right path, you know, and it's been a learning path. And what I appreciate is how um, receptive to feedback uh, IdeaPod has been with developing um, the ideas uh, that they want to de develop on the platform. Um, you know, as with any startup, it's challenging. You, 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 need, you need to raise funds. You need to have the support that you need to, to move it along. Um, I, I appreciate the patience with which they're going at it very methodically so that it's the right thing listening to the feedback of the users so that it is available to them uh, to, to be used as the users see it. So that's why I've been playing with it and showing them uh, what can be done with it. But I'm sure there's much more coming. Um, uh, for me personally, I hope it's uh, around for quite a long time and part of the newest sphere so that my daughters can go and say, Oh, look, here's all the ideas of my dad. I wasn't paying attention when I was 16, but now look at them, you know, and I can, I can look back and I can communicate in the future or, or um, I can communicate backwards, you know, with, with, with my daughters and share my ideas with others. It's a beautiful and elegant way to describe the omnidirectional communication um, that you have, Mark. And certainly when I'm talking to you, I have a hashtag sense of awe. Uh, and a real, for me, it's a real privilege and an honor that we got a chance to do this jam with everybody um, at five o'clock your time, Pacific time, and um, early morning here on this beautiful Friday in Sydney. Um, I just want to thank you so much for all of your support. Not only are you um, a prolific writer, investor, supporter, um, champion, and ambassador for IdeaPod, you've also become a very, very good friend to the entire leadership team and community. So I just want to say thank you so much to Mark Smith. Thank you so much to everybody who's joined. Thank you, Justin Brown, for starting IdeaPod with Mark. And um, if you have any more questions or want to contribute to the discussion, everybody go to ideapod.com. Check out a leprechaun, who's a leprechaun, is right here. He might have some secrets that he can share with you. Yeah, yeah. I am going to head off now, young man, and you can, um, yes, you're welcome to finish this talk whenever you like. Okay. Well, just wanted to thank you, Kat and Justin. Boone and all the idea potters out there um, and anybody who's new to idea pod please uh, explore jump around from idea to idea look for the related ideas respond um, get engaged and and play around in idea pod it's it's uh, it's good for your head all right everybody <laughs> and good for your heart good for your heart yes yeah all right take care bye-bye <laughs>